Hey up everybody! Okay then I'm on next part of my riding car and uh, I'm going to deal with, I think this is part 5, I'm going to deal with the end plates to fill the ends in, the couplings, the footrests, uh, the seat, the safety chains, they're just all miscellaneous items that's got to be done, the bulk of the work's been done now and um, a box section will have to be made if you want to go on a ground level track to raise you a bit higher and uh, then you can use it either for a ground level or a, or a raised track if you take the box off and put the seat on the frame I mean obviously you'll have to make two sets of foot rests at different heights so uh, there's one or two miscellaneous things to do so I'll crack on and see what I can get done today Okay then I'm on rear at riding car now and I'm carrying on with a theme where I'm making it out of all recycled items and items I've got lying around workshop. So for the back plate then I've just found this piece of aluminium box section. I'm going to get this cut down. I'm going to make it low enough so it's low enough to protect the brakes and then if it derails the riding car will land onto the bottom of this, same up front and uh, not damage the brakes So if you remember back in part 2 when I did my frame, I welded four brackets onto the frame uh, on the back and two on the front and then I've got enough protection to clear the brakes if it derails. So the front then is exactly the same except I've got to just probably make it uh, shaped on the ends a, a bit more. So I'm going to look for some material, do the front and then we'll reconvene. Let's just have a look at these foot rests then, briefly. So obviously I've not got a 90 degree angle here and I've determined it's coming off at uh, 105 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same diameter conduit as I did for my frame, just bits of scrap I've got lying around. And then I'm going to fasten them into the riding car by just drilling a 3 16 split pin through or a peg through that will secure it from stopping it t twisting and moving in and out then I'm going to cut these at 53 degrees on all of the bits that join together that's giving me 106 degrees then and then one will be at four and a half inch long and one will be at sixteen and a half inch long well one set of each to give me my race track and my ground track
I'm just going to explain the seat. Uh, it's not an up, it's not an upholstery lesson, I suppose. Um, so I've cut a piece of plywood or chipboard to the width of your riding car and the length. Put a piece of sponge on. The sponge is two inch thick. And then I've got this uh, recycled piece of faux leather. Tacked it on with some upholstery tacks. And just keep everything nice and tight and not get no creases in. And then uh, underneath I've, I've put staples in just to belt and brace it. And then I've put this piece of hardboard or chipboard on the bottom just to hide the um, leather. So the only other thing left to do is to find a method of fastening the extension box onto the riding car because obviously you can take the box off, put the seat on, on the riding car, put your longer footrests on and use it on a race track. It all depends what material you're using with your riding car suppose, but I've got these 22mm copper piping clips for domestic plumbing and they just fit nicely onto my conduit which I've used. So what I'm going to do I'm just going to screw a couple of these at each end to clip onto this cross piece and then when I'm using the box section I'm going to put a, I'm going to put a cross member into the box in two places and, and then again screw these pipe clips onto it Just a, a couple of pointers on, on adjustments, on various adjustments and this will be dependent on the materials that you're using for your riding car, the track that it's going on, the weight of the driver etc that I'm going to deal with now. It don't matter this if you're on a parallel, just a straight parallel track, but if you're, on a, if you're using it on a curved track you need some, some play in your suspension arms between these points here on the frame and in my case I've left myself four to five millimeter on, on the front on the rear to get round the curves so it doesn't bind on the on the flanges or perhaps come off on the curves so you just make your, your brass or bronze bushes to suit the clearance that you want So just to consider now the springs that you're going to use, depending on the strength of the springs and the weight of the driver, your end plates that you've made, which, which just to protect the braking system, once you've got those to the correct depth to protect the brakes, when you sit on it and the springs compress, obviously as the springs compress, the wheels are coming up and bringing you closer to this plate which in turn brings it closer to the rail so you could either use stronger springs or longer springs or you could put spacers in like I've done here then once you've got your wheels and your suspension fitted to your frame I've turned my riding car upside down put it on some parallel wooden blocks on, on both ends 
and then I'm checking the height of the wheels with a, an adjustable square to get all the wheels all, all equal so if you get a wheel that's that's uh, a bit out or they all vary all you do is adjust them on the nut on your suspension spring either compress it or release it to bring your wheel all the wheels up to the same height at rest another adjustment you can make for the height of the rider so when you're sat in the middle of the riding car I've put my footrest vertical straight down if you're a, a taller rider there's nothing to stop you altering this hole that, you've, that I've drilled to pick this pin up. You could make that hole at an angle so that the footrests swing out and then that gives you a little bit more room if you're a, a taller, taller person for, for leg room and if obviously if you're a shorter person you can bring them the other way. That's my riding car completed now then. Uh, in another video I'll perhaps show you how I fitted a water tank into it and the pipe work etc. But for this uh, little series, I'll call that a day I think. Anyway, uh, if you've enjoyed that and you find it useful, give me a thumbs up and a subscribe and uh, I'll catch you on my next video. So, thanks for watching then. Bye for now.